Men on the Moon. The dream became reality in 1969. A number of the astronauts who would travel to the moon brought back stories of special perceptions they had in space. Astronaut Edgar Mitchell was so intrigued that on his 1971 voyage to the moon, he attempted a secret experiment. Mitchell tried to send telepathic images to four colleagues on Earth. The results were analyzed by mathematicians. They concluded that the odds against duplicating Mitchell's results by chance were 3,000 to 1. You ready? Okay, pay attention now. Think of what I'm thinking of. Here I go. The same simple experiment Edgar Mitchell performed from the moon has been performed by amateurs and scientists on Earth for 50 years. The results argue persuasively that something more than chance is at work. They also indicate that at one time or another, most people exhibit some ESP power. Children are often particularly sensitive. Perhaps that's because no one has taught them to laugh at ESP. There are newer, more sophisticated ways of testing ESP. Tests that seem to confirm some ability in people beyond what is considered to be the normal range. Investigators are beginning to find ways to perfect those abilities. ESP is real, they believe, and it can be taught to almost anyone who is willing to learn. that they have five senses. Extrasensory perception has been measured in laboratories. Many scientists believe it can be taught. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. You know why you're here? Yeah. Why? Why are we here? Talk about ESP. ESP. What is ESP? Extrasensory perception. What does that mean? <laughs> I, I don't know. You know like what I mean? We can predict the future. Predict the future? Yeah. You well, can read people's okay. minds. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. What did I just do? Uh -huh. How do you know? I heard it. But you heard it and you saw me. That's right. You used two senses, right? We have five senses. We just use two of them. Hearing is one. Seeing is one. Smelling is one. Tasting is right. Okay. You get the idea. Feeling exactly. Exactly. My hand is on your arm, right? How do you know? I can see it. You can feel it and you can see it. Two senses working. Okay. We have five senses. Now there's a possibility that we may be able to tell each other things without using the senses, mm -hmm. without hearing, seeing, taste, tasting, it's touching, smelling. Mind. That's it's right, through your mind. mind. That's right. That means extrasensory communication. That means outside of the five senses. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's a possibility. Okay, here we go. Each take a pad. The children are fourth graders from a Los Angeles area public school. They were selected on the basis of their enthusiasm for the experiment. Okay. None has had his ESP ability Before tested around. before. The test was designed by the late Dr. Joseph Rhine, a pioneer ESP researcher at Duke University. I have here a deck of 25 cards, and these are the symbols, okay? This is a wave, there's a star, there's a plus or a cross, a circle, and a square, okay? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to see if it's possible for you to read my mind, to see if we can communicate. There's no problem because it's going to be a very simple procedure that I'll explain how I'll do it, okay? I'm laying the deck down here. I'm going to pick up one card at a time. Okay. When I pick it up and look at it, I will concentrate on the picture that's on the card, and I will say, ready, okay? As soon as you get a hunch or a feeling or an idea of what that picture is, put a check on number one under the image that you think I'm looking at. 
Is that clear? Yes. Okay. All right, let's begin then. Professor Rhine gave this identical test to thousands of persons during his three decades of ESP research. With the aid of statisticians, Rhine plotted the scores that could be attributed to luck and the scores that couldn't. In this test, two children scored much higher than random chance would dictate. One child did worse than he might have done by simply guessing. Investigators call this phenomenon a negative ESP effect. The test was given a second time. Ready. 23. Ready. 24. Ready. 25. Ready. Okay, you got them all? Yeah. yeah. Okay, tell you what we're going to do this time. We all have the same cards. We all have a group of five cards. After the second run-through, it was apparent that some children who did well the first time had fallen behind. Other children, who scored poorly at first, did much better the second time. Listen. A new test was improvised to see if the children who were improving would continue to do so. I'm going to take one card, and I'm going to study it. I'm going to hold it right here. You don't know what it is. I'm going to study it. I want you to pick out of your hand the card that you think I'm holding. When you think you know what I'm holding, pick it out of your hand. Don't let anybody see what you're doing, and put it on the table. Are we all done? Okay, we've all made a choice? Yes, sir. Okay, here goes my card. Now, turn over and let's see what you got. <laughs> Very interesting. Okay, four of you picked up my message. So maybe, maybe I did a pretty good job sending messages that time. Huh? Yeah. Four of you, four of you got my message, right? Uh -huh. Okay, let's do it again. One. Shuffle them up. Okay, very good. All right, I'm going to pick a card. I'm going to concentrate on it very hard. See if you can tell what I'm looking at. I'm staring at it very hard. We all got the message? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Turn them over. I have a circle. Okay. All right, we did three that time. I did a little bit of the first time, didn't I? You got both of them. How many got it twice in a row? Just the one. Okay. Relax. This is not hard work. This is not hard work except for me. <laughs> okay, we ready? All right, I'm picking a card right now. I have it. Everybody down? Everybody got a card down. Turn it over. Let's see what you got. Okay. Well, I didn't do very well that time. Look at look at oh, how many of you thought I was holding a star. I got three out of three. out of three. In the first written test, JJ scored lowest. Now, it looked like he was coming on strong. I am making a choice. Choosing. Okay, here we go. I'm looking at a card. Now, now I may... Um, uh, it may be any one of the five. I'm not going to try to trick you or anything like that. It may be any one of the five, and I have it. I have it. Be careful now. See if you can get what I've got here. Everybody down? Yeah. Turn them over. Let's see what you got. JJ, you did it again. Oh. That's four in a row. That's remarkable. Okay, very interesting. One more time. Okay, I'm making a choice. I have just chosen a card. Make a choice. Make a choice and put it down. Okay, you ready? All right, let's see how we do. Turn it over. JJ, that's five in a row. Five in a row. You sure you're not reading my mind? You must be. So something's happening between JJ and I. You're so close. There's a message taking place. Very interesting. Okay. It seems that even in an experiment as simple and as primitive as this, some patterns do develop. It's also obvious in this particular experiment that at least one individual showed a remarkable development of his ability to track in on his ESP power.
It is possible that ESP skill is like musical ability, something that most normal people can perfect with study and practice. Certainly, there are young virtuosos in ESP, just as there are in music. Performances by ESP virtuosos, if indeed that's what they are, attract a lot of attention. Public acceptance of ESP and other psychic phenomena appears to be increasing. Behavior that once got people burned at the stake. Researchers include ESP among other expressions of psychic power, like the professed ability of some to bend metal with their minds. My son Christopher here, seated in front of you, is going to be the one that primarily... Dr. Lawrence Kennedy uses spoon bending to illustrate the power he believes everyone can be trained to use. We're using an energy that surrounds this planet that's here for all of us to use. This is coming from a source that you've all been trained to use. Everybody can do this phenomenon. It feels like one of those plastic swivel sticks, as I started to say, that has been heated over a candle. And everybody see that? Or did it happen too fast? When it goes, it goes like right now. How's yours doing, Chris, huh? You getting there? There you go. Many investigators now believe ESP can be taught. At a farm in Afton, Virginia, a teaching experiment is about to begin. The farmhouse contains a modern electronic laboratory. It is the work of retired businessman Robert Monroe. He and assistant Nancy Honeycutt attempt to teach others how to separate mind from body. It is a feat Monroe has learned through trial and error. We're going to start off by putting the electrodes on. From this we're reading the galvanic body response and it gives us an indication of how relaxed you are and then we can have some idea of how you're doing here. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you clearly. How do you feel? Quite relaxed. That's very good, very good. Should I go through my regular breathing exercise? Just begin your resonant breathing exercise. Your resonant breathing exercise. Start it now. The experiment is designed to give people a new perspective on the power of their minds. Monroe's work is being paralleled on a somewhat larger scale nearby at the University of Virginia. At the American Institute for Psychical Research in New York, a man named Alex Tenos is about to undergo an elaborate test of his ESP powers. From an insulated cage, Tenos will try to project his mind's eye into a nearby lab, there to see an image projected on a screen. I'm now at the window looking in. The window Tanus refers to is behind the researchers. Tanus must concentrate on seeing a symbol displayed against a randomly selected color. All right, Alex. Upper right hand red slave. Tanus' unusual powers are the product of long study and training at several scientific institutions. The University of California's Davis campus near Sacramento. Here, as elsewhere, ESP is undergoing increasing scientific scrutiny. Dr. Charles Tart is a psychologist. 
ESP is really the name for a paradox. It means something happens, information gets transmitted, and we don't know how it gets there, and we think it shouldn't get there given the way we understand the physical universe. I'd like to be able to say it's a certain kind of energy, but we can't say that. We don't know enough about it. What we have to do is start where other sciences started in their infancy, is simply observe what happens and hope we can find some regularities that will do it. The major point of my research is to start with college students, find those who have some latent ability to use ESP, and train them so they can use it strongly and regularly. That's what it's all about. Dr. Tart has chosen Karen Kamastia for an exhaustive battery of tests. This is the 10 choice ESP trainer that you're going to work out on today. What it basically is, is 10 different options. I'm going to go off in the next room in a few minutes and I will randomly select one of these to be the target and try to send it to you. When I do the green light, I'll come on so you'll know I'm sending. What you want to do is do whatever feels right inside you to try and get an ESP impression. And when you've got it, push the button of what you think it is. Now, it makes it easier for me to send if you kind of run your hand around so I get an idea of when you're close and when you're not. Okay, and then once you push it, whatever the right one was, it'll light up in the circle and you'll be able to tell whether you were right or wrong and why you were right or wrong and just how so you'll have a chance to learn ESP. Okay? Mm -hmm. This TV camera is what gives me that ability to see what you're doing. This is the inside of the sender's chamber and this is the TV screen that shows the receiver's panel. She doesn't have her hand on it yet because we haven't actually started the trial. You can see we have basically an identical panel here that the sender can concentrate on. And to actually start the ESP sending, I push this lever to choose and load, which randomly selects a number. I have nothing to do with it. It's done electronically. And then when I pull the present lever, the machine is randomly chosen target five. You can see that Karen seen the ready light come on and is now beginning to move her hand around. And as she gets close to number five, I'm going to try to tell her that's it. This is the time for her to make a choice. And when she makes that choice, it's going to be recorded automatically on a typewriter. There she, now she paused over, but then she went on. Now she's close. Come on, come on, hit it, Karen. Karen misses. The typewriter automatically records her selection and the time she took to make it. What I'm trying to do is work on a theory that says you learn anything by trying and seeing whether you succeed or fail. But you've got to know immediately so you can associate what your internal mental state is with whether or not you succeed or fail. I was going to do that one too. What I've been trying to do in research is give people immediate feedback as to whether they're right or wrong as they go through an ESP task so they can learn what goes with being right, what goes with being wrong, and then change their strategy. So when they start feeling those things that go with being right, they'll respond, and when they feel the things that go with being wrong, they'll wait or try to change their internal state. This, I hope, will be a key to better, more reliable ESP. scientific thinking today about the brain assumes that basically consciousness is nothing but brain activity. All your loves, your fears, your hopes, uh, everything that matters to you eventually comes down to nothing but electrical and chemical impulses in the brain. And I think that's in many ways a true view. The brain is certainly important, but also a distressing view because it leaves out what we might call the spiritual dimension of man. Now, my research is aimed at finding out whether that spiritual dimension really exists. Is the brain really nothing but 
a blown up computer of the sort anyone can buy now, just many orders of magnitude more complex? Or is ESP that something extra that people have talked about? The village of Tiahuanaco, Bolivia. It is an old village, but the strange stone figures that watch over it are older still. Karen Getzla is a psychic. She has traveled all this way from the campus of Duke University to help unravel the mystery of the stones. Explorer David Zink has sent for her. Karen is considered something of a mystery herself. I don't know. Investigators at Duke University have been baffled by the strength of her ESP power. She feels that the same kind of ESP power is evident in the debris of Tiahuanaco. Karen believes that the mysterious architects of these ruins had psychic abilities beyond the reach of modern men. There may be an important lesson here for we who are just beginning to explore the possibilities of the mind. How could a civilization with advanced psychic skills have vanished without a trace? Energy up here, and it's, it's a nice clear line coming up. And I can't believe that it would just be coming off of a couple of dumb pieces of fire. There, Where's something... the main energy coming from? It's in a, a really clear line. Back towards Tiwanaku? Back towards Tiwanaku, but it's, it's in the ground, I think. I wish they could do some... I had a shovel. <laughs> Karen's psychic impressions of Tiwanaku lead her to think the ancients could communicate telepathically. Once this civilization reached full flower, Karen believes that instead of pushing toward new frontiers of thought, the ancients turned their minds against each other. Hopefully, we will not be so foolish. <laughs> 